and welcome to the pier. Welcome to our service for the week of January 7th. If you're new, welcome. Welcome to our community. My name's Jason, and I'm the lead pastor at the pier. We've got a great service in store for today. I'm preaching on something near and dear to my heart, actually a lesson that I learned in 2023, and it's about freedom. It's about Jesus moving us more and more into freedom. So I'm excited to share that with you. Now, before we get started, though, just a bit of housekeeping. Prior to this video starting, you saw some slides that talked about how you can connect with us so that we can make sure you're getting our email and those sorts of things, and also how you can support us and partner with us financially, and then also some of the things that are going on in our community this month. So if you have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can always email us at info at the peer dot church, and many of these things are on our website as well, which is the peer dot church. Fairly easy to, to get to. All right, so we're going to move into our message in just a moment. But before we do that, let's take a moment to pray together. And as I've said before, this is an opportunity to focus our attention on Jesus, to give over to him even the things that are distracting us, the things that we need to entrust to him so that we're in a place where we're ready to hear from the Spirit, to hear from Jesus, so that we're in a place where our hearts and minds are really set on him. So if you need a bit more time in order to do that, feel free to press pause now and take a time of extended prayer. It's really valuable. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time together, and we thank you for what you want to speak to us today. And we just want to center ourselves on you, Jesus ready to hear from you. Holy Spirit, we give you this time. And the things that are holding us back, maybe now that are distracting us, Jesus, we might even name them now and just give them over to you. The stress of the week, the worries of the week, uh, the worries about what's coming up, we just give that to you. They can wait. We just want to hear from you now, Jesus, and be sculpted according to your purposes for us. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, I've got a message today that it really, it's outlining uh, a big lesson that I learned in 2023. And so I've titled my sermon today, Moving Closer to Freedom, My Lesson from 2023. And when you think about it, our discipleship journey with Jesus, it involves a great deal of lessons, right? There's always something new to learn. In fact, to be a disciple of Jesus is to be a lifelong learner. There's always going to be something new for us to, that's revealed to us, something new that we can learn. The Apostle Paul actually talks about this. He says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's Romans 12 too. If you meditate on that, what a passage that talks about our goals as disciples in terms of learning God's will, in terms of having our mind being transformed. So talk about being lifelong learners. If we're really following Jesus, we're going to be learning new things all the time. And I can remember when I was younger, when I was kind of late teens, early 20s, this was something that was really exciting to me and my friends. We would all the time be sharing with each other what we learned. We'd be like, hey, I just want to share with you, here's something that God's teaching me. And it was exciting to hear that. We loved sharing it, not only because we got to share it, but also because it kind of multiplied the learning. I'd hear what my friend is learning and I'd say, oh, that's a good one. I need to learn that too and vice versa. But if you're like me, somewhere along the line, that starts to fade a little bit. This kind of excitement to share what we're learning, it starts to go by the wayside a little bit. Maybe it's because we get busy. Maybe it's because we're not as good at being social as we get older. I know that's true for me. It's a little more work to get out there and see friends and all that when you got younger kids. But also, I wonder if it's because we're nervous. I wonder if it's because we're a little bit scared to share sometimes what God is teaching us for fear of being judged. We're afraid to share and say, hey, this is what God is 
teaching me and have someone say to us, oh, you're just learning that now? You know what I mean? So it kind of gets rid of that, that excitement. But it shouldn't be that way. So in part, this message today is encouragement for us to share, to get back to that place where we're excited to share what we're learning. Because chances are, if we're learning it and we share it, it'll help our friends learn something about that as well. So with that in mind, I wonder what, for you, what has been a big lesson for 2023? Something that really sticks out. Maybe it's more than one thing that sticks out. I would love to hear what you've been learning. And sometimes it's big and dramatic. Sometimes it's smaller and more subtle. Mine's kind of a combination of that. But I learned something important, actually pretty recent, towards the end of 2023. And it was tied to my word as well. You know, we're choosing words again for 2024. And I chose the word fearless for 2023. And I realized that my lesson is connected to that. And maybe it's connected as well for you. But I learned something important about the freedom in Jesus that I want to share. And here it is in a nutshell. When we keep moving closer to Jesus for help, he'll keep moving us closer to freedom. That's what I want to talk about today. And when we talk about freedom, we're especially talking about the things that hold us back, the things that keep us down. So that means we're talking about sin which is a, maybe a tough topic to discuss. So I want to talk about that today. And in order for us to get to that lesson, we have to start there. We need to start talking a little bit about sin. So let's begin there. A little primer on sin. I found that it's important to talk about this because there's often a lot of misconceptions on this topic. And if we go to the way our culture uses the word, there's definitely a lot of misconceptions. Actually, it's not something we really even want to talk about. Now, when we talk about sin, we're talking about a problem. We're talking about a problem that we face, the problem of sin. And often we can think about it solely or almost exclusively in terms of actions. Now, I remember many conversations as a youth pastor about this. And inevitably, whenever we talk about sin, it goes to actions. The conversation, the questions revolve around actions. I get questions like, well, is this a sin? Is that a sin? Why would this action be a sin? Why would this action be a sin? You know, trying to get clarity around all the external actions. But here's the thing. It goes deeper than that. I know I get it when we, if we focus on, say, the Ten Commandments and, and that sort of thing, it could lead us in that direction. We start thinking, well, yeah, it's all about the actions. Like, that's the real problem. And so we start, but then we start thinking, okay, well, as long as I don't do certain things, right, it's all in terms of don't do this, don't do that, then we think I'm good. But it goes deeper. Jesus actually moves us inward. He moves us in a different direction. Here's what Jesus says about sin. He says, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. John 8, 34. The actions that hurt ourselves, that hurt other, they flow from a deeper problem. Jesus uses that slavery analogy, and it's a really powerful one. In a way, the actions are a symptom of that greater problem, that sin is kind of our master. It's like sin that overpowers us and makes us do things that we know we shouldn't. Or even, even worse, do things we didn't realize were hurting people. We didn't realize we're wrong in the first place. We're slave to sin. He says, everyone, if you're sinning, it shows that there, there's this bigger problem in you that you're a slave to sin. And after all, that's the way temptation works, right? That's the experience that we have of it. We, we, there's this inward desire for something that almost compels us to do it. And James 1 says that. It says, temptation comes from your own desires, from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. And these desires give birth to sinful actions. There, you can see how that lines up with what Jesus is saying. There, it's kind of comparing our temptation and this problem of sin to this power that, that sweeps us away, that drags us away, that almost compels us to do things. So sin is more, the problem of sin is this inward 
kind of experience that we have where it's like this overpowering force. That's the problem of sin. And so it gives way to the actions. Now, when you start to realize that, then you wonder, okay, what's the answer? Because that means I can kind of stop doing certain actions, but that doesn't mean that the problem isn't still present. It's deeper, right? It's deeper. Well, the answer is Jesus. <laughs> and that's what Paul says in Romans 7. Thank God he's been talking about this problem, and he says the answer, it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, because it makes sense to think about it a little more deeply, right? When you realize this, you got to think, okay, if the problem is this force that I seem powerless against at times, and it's not, the problem isn't something where I just, if I have enough willpower, then I'll just stop doing things. No, it's deeper than that. It's, it's more powerful than that. The question is, what can release us? How can we be freed from that slavery? What can be stronger and that power in us? The answer is Jesus. The good news is that Jesus sets us free. Paul says God sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have, and in that body God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. There's something about the body that we have. While good from God, the physical world is good, okay? So we're not talking about our bodies being bad or anything like that. But there's this weakness to us. From birth, there's this weakness we have, and it's like sin preys on that weakness and overpowers us. That's why it's important that we get our theology right about Jesus, knowing that he came fully human with a body. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't you just only sort of human or just kind of like a fake human, but really God. No, he was fully human and fully God. And the importance of that is he, as a human, was sinless, and his life and his death, his sacrifice, then could really break the power of sin over humanity, making a way for those who follow Jesus to be freed from this control as well. Okay. But then we talk about the experience of this. <laughs> and if you're like me, you realize, okay, when it comes to freedom over temptation, over this internal force that we're talking about, that's the problem of sin. When it comes to freedom, some of it happens pretty quickly. Some of the temptations just kind of, it's almost like it's amazing what Jesus does. They kind of go away. They fade away. Certain things don't tempt us anymore. But... You stick with it long enough, and you realize you still face certain temptations. And you're wondering, can we speed things up already? You know, this whole freedom thing, can I, I want the full freedom here. I don't want to face any more temptations. Well, what I like about Scripture is that it's very honest about this. It paints a very realistic picture because you see how the people in the Bible face this as well. Think about some big Old Testament examples. Abraham, for instance. Paul calls Abraham the father of our faith. He is the model of faith in God. And he certainly slipped up. He certainly, this sin slavery thing kept showing itself in his story, especially with his wife. Every time that they had to lodge in a foreign kingdom, he'd kind of sell her out, give her over to the king out of fear. You can go read about it. Or think about David. David, known as one of the best kings of Israel, he wrote many of the Psalms and just showing his devotion and trust in God. But you read his story and he just couldn't stand up for what's right when it comes to his family. It caused chaos, caused so many problems. So you see how they were being freed, but certainly faced these temptations, this weakness. And you read the early church, read the letters of Paul, you realize it was far from perfect. Jesus' followers were still falling into traps. They were still kind of being overpowered even by sin in their lives. Because the truth is this freeing work of Jesus, it's thorough, but it takes time. <laughs> and that's not Jesus' fault. That's the nature of the beast. That's how ingrained this sin problem is, how deeply it goes within us. And I think Paul understood this. 
there's this really important passage where he's kind of talking about this, about ex- actions that we know we shouldn't do, wanting to do what's right, but then sin overpowering us. And he says, where's the trouble? Well, the trouble's with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. There it is again. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. When I want to do what's right, I inevitably do what is wrong. You see how Paul is talking about this experience that we all face. Even as Christ followers, there's still times when we know what we should do, but we just seem powerless to do it. We end up doing what we know we shouldn't do. So the question is then, why is that? Why does it take so long? Why does it take so long for freedom? And here, I just want to share something briefly with you that I've found so powerful. Why is it so ingrained? Well, it's because it turns out that the sin problem is very much attached to our giftings and our strengths. It's like sin preys on even our strengths and our gifts. This is something I learned from John Ortberg. He has a great small group resource called The Me I Want to Be, and he talks about signature sins. And what I would also add to this, we could talk about sin traps. The idea is we don't sin at random. Our deepest temptations, right? This, the, our deepest struggles in terms of freedom over the power of sin, it's all tied to our gifts, our, when we talk about our personality giftings and our strengths in terms of what we can offer the world, it's all tied to that. It's all tied to our passions. John Orberg says, tell me your gifts and I'll tell you your sins. You think about personality types. Think about, let's give some examples so I think you'll see what I mean. So think about someone who's a peacemaker. That's part of their personality. That's part of their strength. That's what drives them. They just want to settle conflict. They want to make sure that people are at peace, that there's harmony in relationships around them. Well, that's great, but they'll probably struggle in this area of sin with, they'll, they'll struggle to never enter into conflict. They'll be so conflict avoidant. They're like, I just want peace at all cost. I don't, at all, sorry, at at all cost. I don't want to do the hard part. So that would be their signature sin. Or take a leader, a leader who wants to lead, who has a vision, who wants to bring people along into that vision and see it happen. Well, a signature sin for a leader that's tied to those strengths would be to manipulate oh, they're just not listening to me, so I'm just going to try to manipulate them, try to make my way happen because I know it's right because I think it's right. Or I'll get a little more personal here. Achiever personality types, that's me. I've come to just accept that. I'm an achiever type. It drives me to work hard because I want to achieve things. And that's good. That's a strength. But the signature sin there for me is to live for applause, to live for approval and to make that such a part of my identity. So we have these signature sins, this signature area where we keep falling into temptation, falling into the power of sin over us. And I would call those sin traps. When we see that keep happening in our lives, it's like we just keep falling into that same trap. And just when we think we've beaten it, it comes up again. It sneaks in again. It's like these frustrating themes that keep popping up in our lives. And now we're on to my lesson, something I learned in 2023. It's all within this conversation now. Okay, so that's not a picture of me. But I'd like you to imagine that it is for a moment. There's little me. I don't know how old this kid is. And I've realized that one of my kind of sin traps is kind of what's going on here. Living for that. Okay? Somewhere along the lines, I started living to be one of the best. I don't have to be the best, but I've realized about myself that there's this kind of deep desire in me, this temptation that I got to be one of the best. And 
it actually, it turns out, it doesn't really matter what it's in. Because <laughs> it started out, I, when I think back, it started out in math. Later in high school, I wanted to get into computer science, actually. Many people don't know that about me. So I really, th I knew I had to get good at math. So suddenly that started to drive. Okay, I want to be one of the best at math. And I was entering into competitions and all that. And I was pretty good at it. So I wanted to be one of the best. Or then it shifted to music. I wanted to be one of the best guitarists. Then it shifted to philosophy and academics. I wanted to be one of the best in philosophy in the academic world. And the funny thing is, it's not a competition thing. It's not that I wanted to be the best for that, so I could say, ha, I beat everybody. No, I've realized it's more an, a deeply kind of entrenched thing. I want to be one of the best, and I'm getting vulnerable here, being honest. I want to be one of the best because I felt like that would give me more value. It's like, if that's me, little Jason from Beamsville, without the trophy, if I'm honest with myself, I'd feel like didn't have much value as, as I was. For some reason, I felt this need to kind of prove myself, to be accepted by people, to, to earn people's respect. And I thought that if I could be one of the best in something, then yeah, I would have that value. I would have that respect that I was craving. So you see what I mean? Like it's all tied in with this signature sin, this signature sin trap, and it kept sneaking up in my life again and again. I dealt with it with music. I worked on that with God, and I kind of got to a place where I felt like, okay, I've worked on that. We've moved past it. And then it would sneak up again and later in life, and I was doing it again. And I thought going into 2023 that I was pretty clear of it. <laughs> I thought that battle has been completely won. But I realized recently, I'm doing it again. I was doing it again. And I was doing it in a very surprising area. That's the funny thing about these sin traps. They get more and more subtle. It's like the enemy works on this, right? We have to realize that there's an enemy we're up against. And that enemy likes to use deception and subtle deception. And so I realized that I was doing this now in my own discipleship journey. I realized I was placing a lot of pressure on myself to be a certain type of Christian. I was placing a lot of pressure on myself to really be kind of like pulling through things quickly and being all nearly perfect. And I was putting all this stress and it was causing all this stress. And it dawned on me through conversation with someone, it dawned on me, oh my goodness, I'm doing it again. I'm trying to be one of the best, but as a disciple. I was looking up to say reading Paul in the Bible or I was looking up to certain people that I really think are awesome in the Christian world and I was saying I want to live in such a way where I can gain their approval <laughs> or I could be one of the best then I'll have value then I'll have purpose it snuck up again I fell into the trap yet again but here's what I learned once I became aware of that and I was honest with Jesus about it and prayed about it, even repented of it. The amazing thing was that I found Jesus is, was still with me. He was sticking with me on that journey to freedom in that area of my life. Because I realized the pattern has been, yeah, I fall into the trap again, but the Spirit is there with me to gradually reveal it to me again. And when it comes to these traps, for this time, just sometimes becoming aware of it breaks the power of them over you, kind of frees you from it. And that's what I really sensed from this. Sometimes, though, it's more about you become aware of it so then you can seek the right kind of help to be freed from the trap. But what I've learned then through that lesson is it's amazing how Jesus never leaves us on our own never leaves us on our own in this battle for freedom. He's always working, and that's where this idea comes from. If we keep turning back to him for help, he keeps moving us closer and closer to freedom. So that's my lesson. When we keep moving closer to Jesus for help, I'll say it again, he'll keep moving us closer to freedom. And so 2023, I'm sure you learned things as well. It was a year of lessons, I'm sure. And I wanted to speak on this today that maybe it would help by sharing this that we could all take a lesson from this lesson because we're all in the same boat when it comes to these signature sins and sin traps and this power of sin over us that we need to keep coming back to Jesus with it. Don't give up. 
Don't hide away from Jesus with it, but keep coming back to him, and he's there to help. And I wonder for you, it's a good chance to reflect coming out of this today. I would invite you, take some time to pray today, tomorrow, praying, oh, what's my kind of signature sin and signature sin trap? What's this theme that keeps popping up where it just kind of keeps bringing me down? That's where my temptations lie. And giving that to Jesus. And maybe you're in the space where you need to become aware of something in your life around that. It's a good opportunity to pray. Let the Spirit reveal what the Spirit needs to reveal. But here's the thing. As you do, don't do it out of guilt. Don't do it out of shame. Here's this promise that we have. Romans 8, it says, now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. There's some things that we need to take home from this. There's promises here. When we keep coming back to Jesus, there's no condemnation. It's not about guilt. It's about freedom and knowing that we have the spirit who's freed us. The power of sin is nothing against the power of Jesus. It's a process. It takes time but we will see freedom. That's the promise that we can bank on. It might feel like you're not winning, but we can trust Jesus through it if we keep coming back to him. That's the key part. And by the way, I would say coming to him includes involving others. Don't do it alone. Have some people that you trust that are with you on the journey that you can share with, that you can talk these things through with, that you can pray these things through with. All right. I'm going to finish there, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this conversation. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're teaching us. And first, we just thank you that you did it. You conquered the power of sin. You've provided the solution to the problem, the freedom from the enslavement. We thank you for that, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're working in our lives to bring us more and more into that freedom. And Lord Jesus, we just admit our need for that. And we just pray that you'd help us to keep returning back to you for help. Please, Lord Jesus, if something you need to reveal to me, to us today, as you're listening to this, you might want to take some further time to pray about this. But just show us if there's something, a trap that we're falling into, we pray that you'd make that clear so that we could give it to you, turn to you for more and more freedom in that area. We just pray, Holy Spirit, you do your work on our hearts through this, not for condemnation's sake, but for freedom's sake. We just pray that you would keep transforming our hearts and minds through it all as your disciples. We trust you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as I always say, I would encourage you, don't do this alone. We always need people with us on this journey. So I know sometimes watching this online, you might feel like you're on your own in this. But please, um, if this is stirring up questions for you, if it's stirring up comments that you want to talk about it, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can email me at jason at the and I'd be happy to talk to you. Or if you don't feel comfortable with that, if there's someone in your life that you know is close to you, call them up ask them for coffee to talk about this and to kind of go through it together. That's really where the rubber meets the road, I think. All right, so we'll finish there. And until next time then, see you next week. God bless. Bye.